Harrison Bergeron, age 14, she said in a grackle squawk, has just escaped from jail, where he was held on suspicion of plotting to overthrow the government. He is a genius and an athlete, and is under-handicapped, and now should be regarded as extremely dangerous. So they're saying they've put those fake disabilities on him, but even still, it's not enough to hold him back. What could somebody who's under-handicapped in a world where everybody is weighed down or masked or held back, what could somebody who's not sufficiently held back accomplish? A police photograph of Harrison Bergeron was flashed up on the screen upside down, then sideways, upside down again, then right side up. The picture showed in full length of Harrison against the background calibrated in feet and inches. He was exactly seven feet tall. The rest of Harrison's appearance was Halloween and hardware. Nobody had ever borne heavier handicaps. He had outgrown hindrances faster than the HG men could think them up. Instead of a little ear radio for a mental handicap, he wore a tremendous pair of earphones and spectacles with thick, wavy lenses. The spectacles, or the glasses, were intended to make him not only half-blind, but to give him winging headaches besides. Scrap metal was hung all over him. Ordinarily, there was a certain symmetry, a military neatness to the handicaps issued to strong people, but Harrison looked like a walking junkyard. In the race of life, Harrison carried 300 pounds. How do you think he'd feel about that? If, he, if you were treated like this, could you sympathize with how he might feel? Something to think about. What might he do if he ever got out of those bonds? And to offset his good looks, the HG men required that he wear, at all times, a red rubber ball for a nose, keep his eyebrows shaved off, and cover his even white teeth with black caps at snaggletooth random. If you see this boy, said the ballerina, do not, I repeat, do not try to reason with him. There was the shriek of a door being torn from its hinges, screams and barking cries of consternation, or people who are upset and confused, came from the television set. The photograph of Harrison Bergeron on the screen jumped again and again as though dancing to the tune of a earthquake. Harrison Bergeron correctly identified the earthquake as well he might have, for many was the time his own home had danced to the same crashing tune. My God, said George, that must be Harrison. The realization was blasted from his mind instantly by the sound of an automobile collision in his head. When George could open his eyes again, the photograph of Harrison was gone. A living, breathing Harrison filled the screen. Clanking, clownish, and huge, Harrison stood in the center of the studio. The knob of the uprooted studio door was still in his hand. Ballerinas, technicians, musicians, and other announcers cowered on their knees before him, expecting to die. I am the emperor, cried Harrison. Do you hear me? I am the emperor. Everybody must do what I say at once. He stamped his foot and the studio shook. Even as I stand here, he bellowed, crippled, hobbled, sickened. I am a greater ruler than any man who ever lived. Now watch me come, become what I can become. Harrison tore three straps from his handicap harness like wet tissue paper. Tore straps guaranteed to support 5,000 pounds. Harrison's scrap iron handicaps crashed to the floor. Harrison thrust his thumbs under the bar of the padlock that secured his, he his head harness. The bar snapped like celery. Harrison smashed his headphones and spectacles against the wall. He flung away the rubber ball nose, revealed a man that would have awed Thor, the god of thunder. I shall now select my empress, he said, looking down on the cowering people. Let the first woman who dares rise her to her feet claim her mate and her throne. A moment passed, and then a ballerina arose, swaying like a willow. Harrison plucked the mental handicap from her ear, snapped off her physical handicaps with marvelous delicacy. Last of all, he removed her mask. She was blindingly beautiful. Now, said Harrison, taking her hand, shall we show the people the meaning of the word dance? Music, he commanded. The musicians scrambled back into their chairs and Harrison stripped them of their, of their handicaps, too. Play your best, he told them, and I'll make you barons and dukes and earls. 